Oh, uh, I hadn't made to bring this on stage with me. Um, I was making use of the backstage catering, and uh, I seem to have still got it in my hand. So um, would you mind holding my ice cream for me while I do my talk? Would you mind holding this for me? What's your name? Jim? Tim. Tim. All right, Tim. Don't eat it. Don't even lick it, OK? All right. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just lick my hand. So, I mean, how long is a TED talk anyway? 18 minutes, I'm sure you'll be fine. So, so my name is Vicky, and I've been sitting here today listening to the talks, and I've been amazed and awed at the ideas and the work that people are doing right now. And I've also been thinking a lot about the work here at CERN, and it blows my mind that the LHC was designed to recreate the same conditions present less than a billionth of a second after the universe began. It's just incredible. I mean, to consider what came from that, the immense energy and seemingly infinite possibilities from such a tiny moment is, I think, a good metaphor for what is possible in the minuscule moment that is our own lives. This fleeting flicker of life where we get to live and to breathe and to think and to discover and to achieve our dreams is so brief. And yet, when we commit to the work and ideas that inspire us, so much is possible. A couple of years ago, I decided that I would give something back to the world, that I would seek out opportunities to combine my passions, do something that is creative, something that challenges me. So has anyone here heard of cat bearding? So cat bearding is where you hold your cat over your chin and you wear it like a beard. Now, naturally, I wanted to be a part of this. I didn't want this internet phenomenon to pass me by, but ladies and gentlemen of CERN, let me tell you now that cat bearding is hard. Cat bearding <laughs> is really quite hard. My cat was having absolutely none of it. Not to be put off by this cat bearding failure, I thought, aha, I have other pets. So I tried it again, but with my dog, Bert. Now, Bert. Bert is not the most well-trained of animals, but I was determined to have some sort of animal facial hair. So I went and asked my neighbor if I could borrow his dog. Well, the question I asked was, can I wear your dog as a beard and can you take a picture? He now thinks I'm a complete lunatic, but it was worth it because look. <laughs> as soon as soon as I posted that picture on Twitter, my feed went crazy. And within 20 minutes, a man from the London Metro newspaper had been in touch asking if he could put that picture in tomorrow's paper as he thought dog beards were going to be big. Must have been a slow news day, but still. I found a copy of the paper the next day, and there it was. Not just a photograph, but an accompanying article. And I am delighted to report that I, Vicky Stone, am, according to the Metro newspaper, the apparent leader of the dog beard movement. I have been made an associate of the Royal Academy of Music, and yet leader of the dog beard movement is my proudest achievement. It is all very well building brains in a laboratory or figuring out how the universe started, but have you ever seen a better photograph than that? <laughs> Quite. Um, Enrico Fermi. Enrico Fermi, whilst working on the Manhattan Project, tried to induce radioactivity by shooting a lead target with neutrons, but at the last minute decided to replace the lead with paraffin for no apparent reason, just to mix it up a bit. You know, like we all do now and again. You know, olive oil instead of butter, peas instead of beans, chocolate ice cream instead of a healthy, balanced breakfast, or a dog instead of a cat. I'm not still talking about food, obviously. Um, but my point is, my point is, is that Fermi's experiment worked, like-minded. I'll always remember my science classroom had the motto above the door, tendo canis ud catus barba deficio. Try a dog when your cat beards fail. So, so I bought some uh, musical instruments with me. Um, how's your ice cream holding up, Tim? Great, don't lick it. Um, I want that at the end. So I brought some musical instruments with me here today. And, uh, and this is a guitar. I've got a loop pedal. I've also got a piano. Obviously, I didn't bring the piano. Slightly over my 20 kilo baggage allowance. But 
very early on, my mum made me get piano lessons. So she'd had enough of listening to me play the old upright piano in our house with my face, with my chin, with my elbows, just mindlessly whacking piano keys. It was brilliant fun. And when I started to get actual lessons, I could not believe how boring it was in comparison. Scales, nothing but scales, just putting one finger in front of the other, up and down, never playing any proper music. I couldn't see the point of scales. I thought they were a conspiracy, something that adults invented deliberately to make kids suffer, like times tables and paragraphs. So my brother, I've got a younger brother, right? And my brother is four years younger than me. And I was always trying to boss him around and get him to do things for me too. You see, there is nothing more motivating to an eight-year-old boy than the words, I'll time you. For example, can you go and fetch my hairbrush from my bedroom? I'll time you. Three short words and he's off, running up the stairs and retrieving your hairbrush. I didn't even have a watch. He'd arrive back out of breath and I'd just make up a time that sounded good. Now, my mum had similar tactics. And to get us to help with the housework, she'd turn it into a competition. And crucially, she'd play 80s montage music to make us do it faster. It's basic psychological manipulation. I can't clean now unless I'm listening to a montage. The only way I can contemplate DIY it's a feel like I'm the welding girl in flash dance. Now, montage music is always in a minor key with a driving bass line and synth, lots of synth. And the more jeopardy there is, the more synth you need. And as the tension rises, the jeopardy, the synth gets faster and faster. And as a kid, my pocket money was in jeopardy. So I found a montage extremely motivating. So it's worth noting that uh, in hindsight, those scales that I learnt when I was younger that I really hated are the very thing that make me look so badass when playing the guitar now. So I think that CERN, thank you. So I think that CERN has done a good job of communicating its work to the wider public. Although, I think if you really want to engage the public, you could do with a movie montage. You wouldn't even need to mention bosons or accelerators. So the montage would go like this. Firstly, you'd get an actor to play Peter Higgs, thinking about something really hard. Obviously, it would be Britain's only actor, Benedict Cumberbatch, staring intensely into the distance. Then, you'd get CERN's own sex symbol, Brian Cox, in the background. Obviously, the chronology is not important. So Brian Cox is in the background, his top's off, he's sweaty, and he's holding a massive spanner because he's helping Peter Higgs to build the God Machine! Now, then the massive evil baddies come, but they're giant magnets and they smash the machine up. And Peter and Brian are like, no! Then Tim Berners-Lee comes in and he's like, guys, 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 I've got a proposal. And then basically Peter's like, well, that sounds vague, but exciting. And Tim is like, well, what we'll do is we'll connect everyone's computers together so the whole world can watch Rick Astley videos. And then Peter is like, no, Tim, get out. There's no time for Rick Astley. We've got to build it here. We've got to rebuild it. So they rebuild it. And Brian is all sweaty and dirty and oiled up. And then God appears and gives Peter his particle when he switches it on. And then, and then they all party. And Brian ignores the second law of thermodynamics and plays things can only get better on his keyboard. And there you have the work of CERN fully explained to the public. I did, um, I did kind of want a big, big pyrotechnic at the end, right? And I asked for one. I said, oh, have you got anything at CERN that can create a really big bang? And they said, they said, yes, but it's not going to fit on stage. <laughs> and when I was asked to do this talk, I immediately said yes. I said, what would you like me to talk about? And they said, anything, which they're now regretting. <laughs> and I said, OK, fine, any rules? And they said, well, yeah, if you can make it about science, that would be great. But also, can you please bear in mind that? A lot can happen 
in 18 minutes, but don't run over. You know, there's limits to how much your mind can actually be blown with talks about the little things, protons, neutrons, the outs and ins of atoms, or a tiny little quark. To bigger stuff, the Hadron Collider, the Earth, the stars, and even wider, how did I end up giving a TED talk? Come join the world of science and give a talk, they said, but I know nothing about science. Should I talk about cats instead? Or ice cream, that's my favourite food, but Vicky, this talk might be viewed by thousands all across the internet. They said you need to have a message, what exactly is your point? What's the point in ice cream? Now that put me out of joint. What's the point in ice cream? I thought you Ted Lot were quite smart. Come on, I mean, what do you want? A slideshow with a chart that shows when ice cream is best to eat, how to stop it melting when exposed to heat, and a graph that explains best how to get out stains. You're going to need that. I know nothing about science. I don't know why I'm here at CERN. I just hoped Professor Brian Cox would be here. Then I learned that he's elsewhere in the world today he's the reason I came all this way so screw the science bit and let's return to cat beards dog beards and key time music if you've learnt anything from it then go ahead use it cat beards dog beards and key time music if you've learnt anything from it then go ahead use it but everybody loves a message with perhaps a poignant conclusion or I'll end with a clever scientific illusion so I sat at my computer for days and days and days But all I seem to end up doing is constantly finding ways To post a silly picture or to write a funny tweet But then I saw a friend on Facebook had discovered something neat Her name is Laura Hobley and we used to go to school And now she studies proteins and bacteria which is cool as I read her post on Facebook, she explained the work she does on a particular plant protein that's created quite a buzz. This protein makes a biofilm, not a biopic with the, like the one with Cumberbatch. A biofilm protects plant roots, but listen, here's the catch. You take that same plant protein and you use it somewhere fun Like, I don't know, some ice cream Well, that's exactly what they've done They've created non-melt ice cream They deserve a Nobel Prize It's too late for Tim, of course I can see the hatred in his eyes He's just had to sit there so that I can now conclude The message of my TED Talk is not cats, not dogs, not food it's just keep doing what you're doing Keep at it every day Push the boundaries, break the rules Have fun is what I say Dr. Laura has now moved on from biofilm ice cream She's gone on to use the work on something more extreme where pneumonia is difficult to treat the biofilm work hopes to beat bacteria that is harder to defeat she's used the research of the fun and applied it to the human lung so you see in fun the best work is begun so I guess that is my message That's the thing I want you to learn I guess that is the reason I was asked to talk at CERN So you can learn about Cat beards, dog bits and key time music If you've learned anything from it Then go ahead, use it Cat beards, dog bits and key time music If you've learned anything from it Then go ahead, use it I've just noticed that Tim can't clap Oh well, you can just sway along and guitar music if you've learnt anything from it then go ahead and use it thank you very much thank you